The Golden Grandmother. Once upon a time, in a faraway village, there lived a wealthy farmer named Lucas with his wife Mary. Lucas was a very kind-hearted and generous man, but due to his careless management of his affairs and charity work, he started to lose his wealth. Soon, Lucas became very poor and lost all of his property, besides an old cottage where he lived with his wife. Now Lucas had always prayed for a child in his wealthy days, but God didn't grant him his wish then. Now that he had become very poor and had nothing to even eat, his wife gave birth to a beautiful little daughter. <laughs> A ray of hope entered their lives. Lucas and his wife smiled for the first time in a while. Holding his daughter in his arms, Lucas was suddenly saddened and began to wonder. I wonder how I will look after this little angel of ours. And oh, the christening. What do I do? Honey, take her. I shall go and find a godmother for our little baby. He hurriedly went to the wife of a laborer who lived nearby and asked her to be the godmother to his child. The woman refused because she didn't think that it would do her any good by being a godmother to a child of someone as poor as Lucas. Dejected, he came back home. You see, Lucas, what happens to a man who has wasted his property? While we were rich, the Burgomaster himself was our friend. But now he won't help us. Forget him. Even the laborer's wife would not help us. The poor infant was shivering, and Mary didn't even have thick rags to drape the infant in to keep her warm. Suddenly, she thought of something and said, Lucas, I beg you. Go to our old neighbor, the Burgomaster's wife, Rosewood. She is wealthy, and I'm sure she hasn't forgot that I was the godmother to her child. Go and ask her if she will be one to mine. I don't think she will, but I'll ask her. With a heavy heart, Lucas went through the fields and barns, which were once owned by him, and reached the Burgermeister's house. There, he was greeted by Rosewood. Uh, God bless you, neighbor. My wife sends her greetings and bids me to tell you that God has given us a little daughter whom she wants you to hold at the christening. My dear Lucas, of course I should do this for you, but times are hard. Nowadays, a person needs every penny, and it would take a good deal to help such poor beggars as you. Why don't you ask someone else? Why have you picked me out? Uh, because my wife was godmother to your child. Oh, is that it? I'll do no such thing. If I were as generous as you used to be, I'll become poor just like you. Lucas looked down, and without answering her, walked home, teary-eyed. You see, dear wife, it turned out as I knew it would. But don't be discouraged. I'll take the child to the christening, and the first person I meet, I shall take for godmother. Mary sadly wrapped the baby in a piece of an old skirt and placed it in Lucas's arms. Take care of her. On the way to the chapel, Lucas met an old woman and decided to ask her, uh, Grandmother, will you be the godmother to my child? Um, me? Lucas explained to the old woman about how everyone refused him on account of his poverty, and thus he decided to ask the first person he met. Oh, of course I'll be the godmother. Here, give me the little girl in my hand. 
The old woman and Lucas reached the chapel and saw the priest was about to leave. They at once went up to him and Lucas explained everything to him. The priest felt very sorry for the baby and decided to christen the child. In a small ceremony, the christening was done and the baby girl was named Marishka. Marishka, what a pretty name! After the ceremony, the old woman drew out a gold ducat from her pocket and stuck it into Marishka's clothes. From this ducat with which I bless my godchild, you will have enough to bring her up properly. She will always make you happy. And when she grows up, she will make a happy marriage. Now, goodbye. Saying that, the old woman touched the ground and instantly vanished in thin air. Lucas looked around, bewildered. But as Marishka started to cry, he was reminded to walk back home. Meanwhile, Mary was waiting for Lucas to come back home. She was weeping and suffering from the pangs of hunger as there was nothing to eat in the house nor a cent of money. Just then, Lucas entered. Weep no more, dear wife. Here is your little Marishka. Take out the christening gift from her clothes and you will know what an excellent godmother she has. Mary at once got up and pulled out not one, but a handful of ducats. And in excitement, she dropped them all on the floor. Oh dear, who gave you so much money? Just look! I know! At first, I was flabbergasted too. Now, let me tell you where they came from. Lucas narrated the entire incident to his wife and then they both started to pick up the ducats from the floor. While doing so, they had a new surprise. Wherever there was one ducat, there they found ten. When they got them all together, they made a fine big heap. Mary, the woman must be an angel to help us in our poor times. I'm sure we can keep this money with a clear conscience but we need to hide it first so that no one can find it. Also, please don't tell anyone about this. I shall go to the Burgermeister's wife and ask her to change it. Finally, we have the money to manage our lives better. Yes, but my dear, but don't forget that, that with this money, we must also buy back our old property the house, the field, and the livestock, and then manage it more wisely than before. You're right. That's just what I'll do. I'll manage prudently this time as I have learned my lesson, for poverty is a good teacher. Lucas quickly hid all the money in the chest and took one ducat and left home. After a short hour, he came back with a maid who was carrying a pail of foaming milk along with the food and explained to Mary that the Burgermeister's wife had sent all of this for her along with her greetings. You see, Mary, what just one ducat did? If they knew how many more we have, they would carry us in their arms. I told Rosewood that our child received a handful of ducats as a christening gift. If she comes here to see you, make up your mind about what you're going to say. When the sun rose the next day, Lucas set out for town. And Rosewood, who had been waiting for the opportune time, took advantage of his absence. She visited Mary to find out more about the ducats. My dear neighbor, the blessing of God has come into your house with that child. Oh, if you mean the christening gift, it isn't so very much. However, may God repay that good woman, the godmother. The two chatted for some time and then Rosewood left. On her way back, however, 
Rosewood stopped to tell her friends about Lucas's newfound wealth. Everybody in the village soon knew that at Lucas's house, they had a hogshead of ducats. Meanwhile, Lucas came back with furniture and feather beds and more food. He also bought back his old farm with the cattle and the implements. This marked the beginning of a new life for Lucas. He set to work with diligence and put into practice all the lessons that poverty had taught him. Rosewood, on the other hand, kept searching the jungles, the town square, and everywhere that she could to find the godmother to bless her too. But she never found her. Days passed, and Lucas and Mary lived a happy life with their daughter Mariska. Even with the riches, their truest and greatest joy was their daughter, who grew up into a beautiful young woman. One day she'd meet a prince and get married to him, but that is a story for another time. As for Lucas and Mary, well, they used the money wisely and stayed wealthy forever. Lucas continued to do his charity and good work and never became greedy. He kept a balance between his earnings and spends. He had learned that if one saves enough in moments of crisis, it is the savings that save them. <laughs>